Hello and welcome to another really short video. I just saw a nice question on the Solana Stack Exchange. This one, is there a max number of CPI calls allowed in a single instruction or a transaction as a whole, or is it unlimited? And that's a very interesting topic that I never really thought about. And they're not asking what the max depth is because they know that that's four. So we can't have a CPI call and then in that program, another CPI call and another CPI call, and we can't infinitely recurse down. That doesn't work. There is a max depth on that. But theoretically, there is no limit on how many CPI calls we can do in a single instruction. Essentially, that's the same question as how many instructions can we have per transaction? Except it's not because an instruction needs to fit into the transaction and the transaction has a max size of the 1200 something bytes. So we can't encode infinite instructions into a transaction. But with one instruction, we could theoretically have a bunch of CPI calls. And I would now just be interested, what's that limit? like? I know that a CPI call needs some compute. So we can't just CPI call, CPI call, CPI call, because that takes up compute. But I guess as long as we're within our compute budget, we can keep doing CPI calls. So today I wanna answer the question of how many CPI calls can we do in one transaction? Let's get this party started. Because my answer would be, it's truly unlimited. That's my intuitive answer. But let's have a look at that. And for that, we need a program. Should we go playground? Sol PG. And we create ourselves a new native Rust because we don't want to have too much compute for anchor stuff. What wallet do I have here? A new DevNet wallet? How can I change my wallet? For real, how do I change my wallet? Okay, whatever. Let's use F off. F off, we'll just use it. Give me five. So process instruction, no messages. We don't want anything that costs us CPI. Well, okay. We do a program to call, invoke. And what better program to call than the no op program? Because it does nothing than say, okay. So that doesn't cost us too much compute. Let's call it no op. And the account is like, hopefully we can just have nothing. And also the data, we can just have nothing. We did one CPI. Let's see if that would build. See here, I would really like to have my Rust analyze and then be able to automatically import that. You can't have the advantages of playground without the disadvantages of playground. Program invoke and the instruction. Ah, there. Does that build? You need a pub key and we only have a reference. Damn, can we clone this? Ah, build successful. Nice. Okay, getting there. Can we now deploy it to ducks? Yeah, sure. Why not? Deploy the ducks. Deploy successful. Can we now call the ducks? No anchor IDL found. Oh no, because we don't have an IDL. Okay, shit. Do we have tests? Instruction. I just do one pub key. No op, no signer, and not writable. Cool, test it. One test passing, look at that. So what did we do? We called this with those accounts, wonderful, wonderful. And there's one CPI to the no op program. And we did one CPI, as we can see here, it took me a hundred compute units, lol. So in total we used 1,700 compute units for one CPI. So let's test how many CPIs we can actually do. Cause I don't think there is a limit. How much CPI can you do? Uh, let's loop yo. Loop. Let mute. We did CPIs. And maybe also if, because otherwise we're gonna fail. Actually, no, let's let it fail. I'm just interested. If we, let's see if we somehow get the simulation for that. We build it, we deploy it, <laughs> and now we test it. And this is gonna fail. Max instruction trace length exceeded. I've never seen that. There's a max instruction trace. But can I still get logs somehow? Simulate transaction. Can I run this? 
Transaction fee payer required. Okay, fine. There we go. So we see we were able to do 42, nice number, CPIs, and then we got log truncated. Also not ideal. But you know, compute is not going down that fast. I mean, okay, from the 200 that we had here, with 42, we have still more than half of the compute available and our log got truncated, damn it. Okay, okay, how about we do set a limit? Let's say if our counter reached 100, break even, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. build it, deploy it, run it. Still max instruction trace length exceeded instruction trace length, what even is that? But like, if I were to stay at the 42, then that will do. So 30, uh, 42, I can definitely run. Yeah. Noop, 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 noop. So even 43, I can definitely do 42 CPIs. So at which point is the problem? 69? Nope, 69 is already max instruction trace. Okay, 50? 50 is still okay. Okay, we're gonna figure this out. Well, let's do binary search. 60, 60 is still good. 65, I love how fast the playground builds and deploys. This is freaking amazing. 65 is not okay. Okay, what's a number that is probably the thing then 64 so i would go 63 such that it still works nope 62 maybe i'm off by something something okay so 62 that's the max this here so one yeah 63 63 cpis so apparently there is a limit because we are not reaching compute limits we are reaching those instruction trace length, max instruction trace length exceeded. Feature gate, limit max instruction length. Description, see this. Problem at the moment, the total number of instructions, including CPIs and the transactions only implicitly limit by the compute budget. Oh, and there they were counting how many had that much. And 100% were below the 61. Haha, <laughs> and there we have it, the 64. The reason for this limit, so this limit being the explicit limit on the instruction trace capacity, is that so we can calculate the upper bound on the memory that the program runtime will require for execution. This enables us to remove multi-threaded memory management, which is the next constraint in parallelism after direct mapping is enabled. So we found the solution to our problem. And here it's also said that this is 64 and here max instruction trace length, I like to see the source, programming model, runtime, max instruction trace length, 64. Yeah, cool. But that's just on an instruction level, which means theoretically I could add another instruction that does the same thing and that should then also work. Nope, that's limited on a transaction level then. Can I do two with 20? That should definitely work. That's like 40 in total. That will do. And then a third one, probably not anymore. Yeah. But here we're dying in instructions too. The max instruction trace length exceeded. So that's also on a transaction level where the total instruction trace length is counted. But I can split it among several instructions. In this case, I have two with 20 each. So 20 or 21 each, that will work. But if I in total exceed the 64 or the, even the 63, then I think I'm dying because of index in trace instruction trace capacity. So apparently it doesn't matter how deep, like if I have a CPI inside a CPI, it counts, or if I just have another CPI on the same level, or even if I have several instructions, there I'm limited. All right, cool, we found something out. So thank you, Syed, for asking that question. I learned something, because my 
initial answer is wrong, there is a limit. Post answer. There we go. Working on our stack exchange reputation. All right. And I hope that while doing so, I can teach you something. As always, check out other videos, like and subscribe. And let me know if you want me to make more quick little videos where I just answer some stack exchange questions. And then I'll see you in the next one. Till then, peace out. Was I the first to answer this? I think I was the first to answer this. <clears throat> well done, me. 15 minutes to answer one stack exchange question. At least I learned something.